hi wonderful people welcome back to my channel so if you are new to my channel please like and subscribe to get more videos so guys in the last video we talked about how you can prepare your application and um, how how you can also um, apply for an admission to study in a German university in this video I will be sharing very useful tips on how to attend your uh, German study visa interview at the German Embassy. I will also be sharing with you the documentation or the number of documents you would need or the types of document you will take with you when going for the interview at the Embassy. So if you like this video and if you are new to my channel, feel free to like my video, to subscribe to my channel and we look forward to more videos coming from me so stick around and the video will be starting soon <laughs> welcome back guys so when you have received your admission letter I would say congratulations to you and also when you have gotten an interview date I would then proceed to the step of preparation you have to prepare for your interview at the German Embassy the, I would say the the interview is usually not very difficult. I would say it lasts for between 10 to 30 minutes. I think it depends on your course of study and it is case by case, it's different. So also it depends on the interviewer. Maybe you, you, you go for this interview and you find someone who's more chatty, who wants to get to know you, who wants to get to know more reasons, or you go to someone who is just you know probably having like not so much of a good day and just wants to you know do away with you <laughs> so guys it depends so I would say um, first you start gathering your documents so all the documents you use to apply for the admission or for your course of study is what you should have with you so I will I will give 10 lists 10 um, lists of 10 documents that you would need to take with you when going for this interview and the first document which will be on this list so guys if you would like if it's easier for you you to pick up a pen or a paper pen and paper and start to write down this list so the first document on the list will be your admission letter you should have it printed I think for some universities they send um, a copy to your post box Box, but otherwise you can just get an email confirmation and you print this out so this will be the first document you should have with you your admission letter from your university you should have um, your international sorry your national passport so your passport um, you also take it with you your birth certificate this is very important um, you should have also with you a passport style photograph so I think about four to six copies of uh, a passport style photograph you can check for what you know what requirement for this photograph online yeah so that's the fourth thing you need and the fifth one would be you have to open a blocked account so what is a blocked account a blocked account is a proof of financial resources you need to prove to the embassy that you have the financial capability um, to see you through your study and initially the amount you need for this block account was about 8,000 euros but I think it has increased right now to 10,236 euro so this blocked account you can open it with I would recommend three banks Deutsches Bank, um, Finti Bank and um, the other one is called Expatrio. So Deutsche Bank is actually a physical bank in Germany. Finti Bank and Expatrio are an online bank. So I would recommend Finti Bank because I uh, Finti Bank because I used it and it's very reliable. Um, whenever you have problems, it's easy to contact the customer service and they get back to you on time. So guys, I would recommend using Finti Bank for your blocked account. So when you've put this money or you sent this money to Fintibank, what they do is they send you a confirmation letter and this confirmation letter will 
um, it will be in German and also it will be in English so take both copy with you so it's just a confirmation that you have blocked your account um, with the amount of 10,236 euros and that confirms that you have a proof of your financial resources so the sixth document you should take with you is all your certificates you have attested um, the first in the previous video we talked about how you could attest your certificate at the Ministry of uh, Education and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs so this document you're taking with you actually you're taking the real original copy that was stamped you're not taking with you the other copies or the photocopies you're taking the real original copies with you so that's the sixth document you need the seventh document is an application form so you can print this application form from the German Embassy um, website um, it's easy to find it you cannot miss it just go on the German Embassy website print the application form fill it up sign it and provide accurate um, information yeah so the seventh sorry this eighth document you need with you if you were married if you have kids um, it's very important to take with you your marriage certificate and your children's birth certificate the reason be that uh, maybe along the line you might decide to um to invite your family over while you're studying and they, they should have a proof that you're married and they should have a proof that you have kids that are related to you and that with this they are able to um to know or to understand that you know you're going for a study but at the same time you have families which might be visiting you soon and the ninth um, document you need is your health insurance. So because the embassy would give you a study visa, which is valid for three months. But when you get arrive to Germany, you are able to convert this um, visa to a, a permanent, uh, not a permanent, a study. You're able to convert it to a study visa. So first of all, the embassy gives you three months that stipulates that you're going to study. So you should get an insurance that covers that three month duration of the visa. And when you arrive to Germany, then you can change this insurance to whatever is suitable for you, depending on how old you are, depending on your age. So usually what happens is a lot of people go for the public insurance it cost about I think between 90 euro to 110 euro um, other people go for the private insurance which is I think about 35 to 40 euros so guys what I would recommend is if you're gonna take an insurance just for that three months duration take an insurance from care care concept yeah so care concept offers this kind of travel insurance for three months and then when you arrive here you can um, make up your mind on what kind of insurance you want to you know continue with so that is the ninth document and the last final document you need is your IELTS guys we talked about the IELTS in the previous video if you've not watched that video I will link it down and please watch that video to understand what, what we talked about, IELTS. Um, if your course of study, the language of your course of study is in German, then you need to show your German proficiency certificate. So guys, I emphasized on the last video how important German is when you want to live in Germany or while you're living and studying in Germany. So please um, don't forget if your language of study is in English, you have to prove or show a proof of your IELTS. And if your uh, language of study is in German, you also have to show them the corresponding um, German language proficiency. So guys, that would be all for the documentation you need when you're going to the embassy. I would advise that on this day you're going for the interview, please be punctual I beg you please no Nigerian timing no African timing if your interview is one o'clock try as much as possible if you know there is traffic on the way if you know that um, th there could be something that might hamper your journey please go early if your interview is one o'clock leave the house at 10 maybe nine o'clock try to get there on time try to get there I think at least one hour before your interview so that you mentally 
prepared you are not stressed out and then you can easily arrange your um, documentation properly in order to be more relaxed when you go in or when you're ushered in so guys in the next um, episode I will be telling you the few questions or the interview questions that you might encounter when you get to the embassy I would also like to emphasize on your dress code so you are going for an interview it's called interview it's not a disco <laughs> you're not going to dance you know <laughs> so, and you're going it's a formal interview so guys turn up i mean i'm not saying you should wear a suit just turn up in a nice smart um, um dress code for the men i would uh, recommend uh, wearing a nice you know trouser plain trousers I wouldn't recommend wearing a jean honestly I think that's very casual put on a nice trouser and a nice shirt a corporate shirt you don't necessarily need a tie for the ladies I would say wear a really nice uh, pencil skirt um, and also put on a very corporate top I think that that looks a bit professional and you look a bit serious you know it doesn't matter if you're going for a master's program or a bachelor's program I think how you present yourself matters a lot and I think they can actually the interviewer can see that you're a serious person or you're not a serious person or they might just assume just by the way you dress please take out every earrings if you're a man and you're putting earrings or women you're putting on nose ring please take them out if possible this is just what I think okay this is not like I'm not saying that it's something you must do this is my opinion guys so do not read much meaning into it if I were you I would say don't you know take out everything that might paint you as an unserious person when you're going for this interview so um so that's what I just wanted to chip in and for the interview question I think I will start with the first popular question I think you can get all this in the internet but I will be giving you tips and as well as giving you some maybe one or two inputs on how to answer these questions but basically I have to run through it because um, I don't want this video to be so long <laughs> I just like you to take the most important things out of this video so the first question and the very popular question is why do you want to study in Germany so they want to know what is your purpose why why Germany um, this the answer to this question can easily be found in your motivation letter why why did you choose germany you can say germany is the i don't know the seventh largest economy in the world uh germany is known for i mean it's 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 known for its industrialization or you can say germany is known for anything you know you can praise germany so find things on the internet that you know that speaks more about Germany you can say they have the best educational system in the whole wide world um, you can say anything about Germany which is true you can say you know they they they, they are very good at beers or whatever <laughs> please don't say that just the positive things yeah so that's the first question why do you want to study in Germany the second question is why do you decide to study in this university so read up on your university know what your university is good at if your university is good in research or your university uh, takes up some really important project read up read up about it and be able to tell the interviewer why you choose this university instead of the other one or why you decided to go for this university in this town so the third question will be what is the duration of your study some people can just they can just totally forget you know they might just go there and they would think that their duration of study is for usually for bachelors it's for three years and for masters I think it's between um, one and a half and two years so guys don't forget don't go to the embassy don't go for the interview and forget your duration of study because it's important and the fourth question is um, why did you choose this course so like I said in my first first video we talked about how you should select your course of study select a course of study that's relevant to what you've done before so the question why did you choose this course of study you can say because it's related to what I have done before because I want to go down this career uh, lane I want to go down this career field and that is why I've chosen this course but please guys try as much as possible to speak more you know try as much as possible to give more clear answers 
um, but that has more information. Um, the fifth question is, um, what's the name of your university and when was it founded? So like I said, make a research about the university you're going or you you will be attending and find information that are relevant because sometimes you, you might think they might not ask you something like this, but sometimes it can pop randomly in the mind of the interviewers, but you should have that in, in um, you should have that in mind. Um, the, the sixth question is, what would you like to do after this course of study? So guys, usually you should be able to tell because I think this question is quite personal. I wouldn't say I have a, a perfect answer for this question. I would say it's up to you. What would you like to do after the course of study? Do you want to return back home to Nigeria or to wherever you come from? Do you want to um, stay in Germany after study and make maybe a, an internship? It's called a practicum or do you want to um, move abroad, you know, somewhere else from Germany to Canada or something like this, you should have your plans. Um, I'm pretty much sure that this question will not be missed. They want to know. They want to know what's next after Germany. So guys, if you want to stay in Germany afterwards, then you should be honest and tell them that, you know what, I want to stay back in Germany. I want to, um, I want to find a job in, in Germany. I think you should put that in a way that would be beneficial to, to, to Germany. So you can say, I want to utilize my skills or I want to utilize my knowledge um, to make a, a difference in Germany. Um, because I think from what I read before, people try to say that, you know, you should always tell them that you want to go back home. I don't think that's necessary if you don't want to go back home. You know, you can as well let them know that you want to take back the knowledge back home um, to make you know to make a change in your country so guys it's totally up to you it's a personal question so the seventh question is do you have an accommodation so in the previous video we talked about how you can secure an accommodation with through your ISA and through the student in VEC that's the local state organization that takes care of the student um, and, and you can sort out your accommodation. So if you have an accommoda accommodation, you can say yes, you have an accommodation. And if you don't have an accommodation, you can um, tell them that you are working on it. The eighth question is, who is sponsoring your trip or who is sponsoring your education? So I think the reason why the embassy wants to know this is because um, they want to be sure that you are moving to Germany and you have a backup or someone or someone or the family members who who will be there to um, to help you out just in case of a, any financial difficulties so they want to know I'm, they are not asking you this question because they want to know about your family life or if your family is rich or not no 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 they are asking you this question because they want to know that you have someone who will be there just in case you encounter any financial uh, problems, but if you are self-sponsoring yourself, just like I am, you can say I have a job. Um, I have been saving towards my education, and I have prepared myself um, up to this extent. And you don't have to say much because your proof of financial resources, which is the blocked account, shows that you are prepared to financially support yourself. But at the same time, if it gives you more confidence i think you can just you know take a statement of your account with you and maybe i don't know how much is it it shows in your account but it can prove that yeah actually i can support myself and this is my account statement this is what i've been earning over the last couple of months or years and it should be sufficient to see me through my study when i'm in germany um the ninth question is how many countries bother germany so guys in my last video, I told you, you know, Germany borders nine countries. You should know these countries by heart. I'm sorry, I don't know them right now. <laughs> but I can try. Germany borders nine countries. And those countries are Switzerland, um, Austria, Denmark, um, Netherlands, <laughs> Poland. Okay. I, I tried with five, please, guys. But please read up on how many countries... Um, it's bordered or Germany borders yeah and the tenth question is um, how what do you know about the town you are studying this is very important you should know 
whatever state or town you're going to study in Germany, you should know what is special about them. If they are good at football, if you're going to Munich, you know, where the Oktoberfest is happening, or if you're going to, I don't know, Berlin, the international city, um, if you're going to Hamburg, or you're going to Cologne, you should know what is special about the state or the town you are moving to. You should know what makes them stand out. Um, so that's the 10th question. And I will just like to chip in the la another one. It will be, um, it, it, it is, it, maybe they might ask you this question, maybe they might not. So they would probably ask you, do you want to return to your home country after your study? So guys, that's entirely up to you, entirely up to you. That is your personal goal. If you want to return back to your country, you can as well say you want to return back to your country. If you don't want to return back to your country, you say, you know what, just forget it. I'm not coming back. I can't be bothered. I <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but please be honest about your answers and don't beat around the bush because these interviewers are quite smart. They, 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 they feel you, they read you, you know, they, 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 they can see into you. <laughs> I'm just joking. So guys, that is all for the interview questions. And you know what I have to say? I believe in you. If I can do it, you can do it. No one taught me these things. I didn't find a YouTube, a proper YouTube video that, you know, that could enlighten me about how to prepare for this interview. So guys, please take it serious. Please take it a very, take it as a very serious interview and be prepared. Show your confidence, you know, through your answers and be bold, sit up. Don't, I don't know, don't, I don't know, don't cross your leg or wh whatever, whatever works for you guys. Please, it's free, do whatever you, you feel like, but please, Keep in mind that you should maintain a level of professionalism. So guys, um, the final tips I will be giving here is this. Be clear in your answers. Um, go straight to the point, just like I said earlier. Be calm. Be patient. Wait for the, the question to come out of the interviewer's mouth before you jump into their mouth. <laughs> Please wait for the questions to land before you answer. Um, also try to be polite, try to answer in a very polite and friendly manner. Look the interviewer in the eye. Don't be shy. Don't, you know, bend your head. Um, don't feel intimidated. Be confident. Smile when you can. I think it's okay to crack some joke. You know, if the interviewer is lively and friendly and asks you some, I don't know, funny questions, they usually do. You can answer also in a funny way if you feel like it and then you can just laugh, you know. I think that should be fine. Um, so I think that should be all. And the last will be whenever you ask the question, please think carefully before you answer. Because you don't want to make contradicting um, um, answers like you say something before and then you said something else and then it's like the interviewer is like what but, but but you said something like this before so guys think carefully before you answer the question but like I said I believe in you if I can do it you can do it better than my than I and so that would be all guys if you have any questions I am here to answer your question like I am on your matter you know <laughs> Feel free to leave comments in the comment section below. Feel free to um, to leave any questions. I will answer them duly and I will love you and I will leave you and I wish you all the best. Germany is a beautiful country and it will open up your mind, especially when you study in Germany. The educational system is awesome and you can travel and it gives you it makes you a well-rounded person especially when you put yourself out there so guys thank you so much for watching my video and thank you for your patience i will love you and leave you and i wish you a very lovely day namaste bye <laughs>